All right, let's go here now, y'all. Everybody get your Bible out, get them ready here this evening. We're going to get right in the Word of God here tonight. Now, don't forget now, uh, our youth night next Sunday evening. Next Sunday evening. We're doing this service at 5 o'clock because we got visitors coming from nearly three hours away. And they're going to bring a whole bunch. And I want to encourage you to work on your, if you got a daughter, son, grandkids, friends, anybody, any young people who maybe have been coming and they slipped away because of some wicked friends or or the devil or something, that maybe, I don't know, whatever, get them in here next Sunday evening at 5 o'clock. Ladies, bring desserts. Uh, we're going to be feeding the, our visitors food so they can hit the road. And if there's stuff, these are stuff left, there'll be for our, our young people also. We are bringing some bus kids. Not all of them, uh, the older ones, uh, so everybody can uh, pay attention and hear. And uh, again, we are tonight officially uh, what we call youth rally mode. And uh, I'm going to preach something like I, I usually do a little bit different this time of year in Matthew 17. Matthew chapter 17. And uh, we'll look here in the scripture tonight. My heart is really heavy, and my heart is heavy because of the condition of my people. When I say my people, I'm talking about us. I'm talking about Christians all over the world. My heart is heavy for churches. Preachers are fussing and fighting and arguing with each other and, and don't even want him to go soul winning. Church members are just staying out of church for no reason at all. We can do everything else in the world, but can't go to church. And you can't make somebody want to do something. That takes the Lord. And I, my heart is heavy tonight. We had a tremendous youth rally last year. I was really, really blessed and encouraged. 20-something, 20, 20 I think 26, 7 got saved. And that does not happen as just an accident. So I'm going to pour out my heart to you tonight. I don't expect all of y'all to listen. Uh, I don't. You're too selfish. Uh, I expect some of you to. I wish everybody would. But many of you are in here tonight just too selfish to listen. And tonight, I want to preach on prayer and fasting. Jesus said, there's certain kinds of works that cannot and will not happen without prayer and fasting. Not just prayer, prayer and fasting. Not just fasting, prayer and fasting. Taken out of the new Bible. If you go to a church where the preacher uses the NIV or a new modern version of the Bible, that fasting is left out. Wonder who, would left, wonder who would want that left out of the Bible? Wonder who would want that uh, a preacher to use a Bible that don't have fasting in it in Matthew 17? You see what kind of battle we're in here tonight? Look at Matthew 17 and verse number 19. Matthew 17, 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, How come nobody will ever get saved? How come I don't enjoy church? Why have I lost my burden? How come I can't get my neighbors to come? Basically, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence for to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Boy, we can shout on that, can't we? How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Now, I'm going to talk about both tonight, prayer and fasting. We'll begin, Lord willing, tomorrow on our fast for the youth rally. We are not fasting to try to prove to somebody that we're spiritual. We are not fasting to try to be spiritual. No, it ain't, it ain't worth that. Uh, it's, it's not worth doing for any other reason. And for the glory of God. I am going uh, proclaiming that here tonight. 
as your pastor, and as they did many times in the Bible. Now, as you know, you've heard me say this many years, there are three types of fast in the Bible. The, and fasting means abstaining from physical nourishment for a period of time in order to get our hearts and minds and uh, our thoughts in line with God's will that the Lord may hear us and do a great work. That's what he told his disciples. He said, look, you know how come you couldn't get rid of that devil? Because the only way you can do it is by prayer and fasting. According to Jesus, there's some things in my life and your life that ain't never going to change except by prayer and fasting. A counselor will never do for you what prayer and fasting will do for you, according to Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's right. That's right. Look, my flesh don't like this a bit more than yours does. But the Bible said that we are, we are, we're, we're supposed to walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In the Bible, there are three types of fast. And fasting means not eating. That's what it means. It means not eating food. And when, when they fast in the Bible, uh, they, there's what we call in the Bible an absolute fast. Absolute means nothing. No food, no water. And that uh, uh, for a person to do that more than a few days is supernatural. You can live up to 60 days with no food, but you can't live over 12 days scientifically without water. you got to have water. Moses in the Bible was a picture of that. He went up in the mountain, and he went up there, and he did neither eat nor drink for 40 days. That's supernatural. A person cannot do that without help from God. Uh, and that, that's one type of fast in the Bible. And then in the Bible, there are what we call partial fast. Uh, partial fast um, is, um, is just water, just water. In the Bible, they would, they would fast, and they would just drink water when they were fasting. Now, listen to me tonight. The Bible teaches all the way through, Old Testament, New Testament, Jesus, Paul, New Testament, all the way through. I've heard preachers literally get up and mock and laugh at people for fasting. I've been in preachers, man. That's why I don't like to go to them. I heard preachers get up and say, boy, we need to pray and fast. And the guy got up and laughed and said, hey, I'll tell you what, we'll pray, y'all fast. And everybody just died laughing. And I thought, that's exactly why there's no power in most of our churches tonight. You don't die laughing and mock what Jesus Christ said for you to do. I wonder how many preachers in Burke County believe in fasting. How many preachers in this county preach on fasting? Wonder how many churches, and I'm not tooting my horn, brother. I don't like it no more than you do. But I'll tell you one thing, you cannot ignore Jesus Christ and come out a better person. Jesus saw the need of it. Forty days and forty nights. I mean, Jonah there proclaimed that fast there to Nineveh. You know what he said? He went in there to Nineveh and he said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. You know what the king did? King said, man, we're going to get down to business. He said, man, we're going to mess around here. God's going to kill us. We better get right with God. He said, all right, nobody eats nothing. Hit your knees. We're all praying. And they did that, and God spared that city. Even their animals, the cows and stuff. People say, well, i got to feed my dog. Look, you can fast, your dog can fast. It ain't going to kill him. Amen. Dogs, it, dogs can do it easier than we can. They really can. It's good for them. Uh, uh, but just, I'm just kidding, but not, not really. Uh, that's what they did in the Bible. So they did in the Bible. And you know how God heard and answered their prayers. I want God to hear and answer my prayer. Do you want God to move in your home? Do you want God to move on your children? Do you want God to fix your marriage problems? Did you know fasting and marriage is connected? You know there in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, that, that uh, the Lord told him there, as he said, I told a husband and wife, uh, when you need prayer, he said uh, that you should some, sometimes in a marriage, there's an even abstain from uh, physical intimacy uh, for a time that both of them may give themselves to prayer and fasting. That's what the Bible said. That's New Testament church Christian doctrine for a husband and wife to fast together. It sure is. And, uh, what, you know, uh, what, what I'm saying here this evening is so foreign, I would doubt this first time some of y'all have ever heard it. And the reason is because we as America are belly worshipers. Uh, we worship our belly, buddy. And the Bible said that twice. 
whose God is their belly. Amen. The Bible said uh, meats for the belly and belly for the meats. And God shall destroy both it and them. That's a little poetic verse of scripture, isn't it? Lord have mercy. That cuts it down there where we live. But the Bible tells us that a fast is to obtain from, from physical nourishment. And it is a deliberate abstaining from food in order to see God's power and grace and work in our lives. It is for all ages. It is for all people. I've had people tell me, they said, I can't fast. Uh, but I'll, I'll do this and that. Now, that is not true. That's not true. Uh, you can't. You may not be able to fast long, but everybody can fast. Some, some may not be long, but everybody can fast some. Now, in the Bible, the longest fast there was was 40 days. Unless you want to count Moses when he come down there and he got, he got, he, you know, he got mad and throwed the tablets down when he was all out there having a rock concert and is having a halftime of the Super Bowl out there, buddy. And he throwed them things down and broke them. And he's the only man in the Bible who broke all Ten Commandments at the same time. And went bam and busted them rocks up and turned right around and went back up there and did it again. He might have got him a, some bugles before he went back up or a snack. That's what I've been eating. Caramel bugle, best thing you ever eat. <laughs> Lord, them things are key, but they sure are good. I, I bought got flea market, had a bunch of them, and there's 50 cent a bag. <laughs> and I mean, them things are delicious. And Moses might have had some bugles uh, before he went up there. I like regular bugles, and I like them, uh, them the other kind, a little uh, cheddar or something like that. I don't know what they're, uh, but them, them things good. Uh, not good for you, but they're good. And uh, but uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. But he turned right around, goes right back up there, and fast another 40 days. 80 days. 80 days. Now, some people differ as far as they see when they're fasting, how they, how they uh, uh, nourish them. Some people drink juice. Uh, some people drink, uh, he said, Brother Danny, I just don't see how I can do that. Now, I've never done it, and I'm not going to preach you to do something that I ain't done myself. I'm not going to do it. But I do have one, two, three, four, five. I know at least five people that have fasted 40 days. I have two or three here in our church have, and I have at least one, two, two or three friends, preacher friends, who have done that. And what they did is they drank juice or some kind of liquid. J. Harold Smith, who wrote this book that I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about, he would go on lengthy fast, and he had to prepare himself when he was going on, going on a fast and, and eat less and less, you don't just pig out the day before hoping that'll last you through. Uh, you know, <laughs> that, that's, what my, that's what my flesh likes to do. I eat a whole bunch because I ain't going to get nothing tomorrow. So I, boy, that's a real great de dedicated motive. Uh, but uh, he, would, he would cut back a little bit, and then, and then he would fast, uh, and, uh, and then he would come back on just, he couldn't eat nothing but yogurt and stuff for a few days afterward. And, and J. Harold Smith would say, he'd go through these 40-day fasts. I know another preacher friend of mine up in uh, Montana who told me this. And uh, I know in California, and he fasted 40 days. He lost 57 pounds. And when he, when he come out, he was stronger and better than others. J. Harold Smith said when he fasted, you know, physical benefits, he, when he fasted 40 days, he said every blemish on his skin cleared up. On little spots on your skin or anything like that. Uh, you know, that where you, you think, ah, I'm just getting old. Uh, but uh, the, tr the truth is, uh, it's stuff uh, coming out of our skin. He said, he said his tongue, he said his tongue turned pink like a little baby, just as pure as it could be. He said, uh, you, know, you know, when you don't, when you fast, and you get that old white junk on your tongue, I got, you know what that is? That's a, that's a poison coming out of you uh, that you have built in you, and it comes out. You've got to let your stomach rest. You've got to give it a break. You've got to. You've got to. Uh, and, and I know, I know, my, some of y'all sitting right here, your mind done made up. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. And I ain't going to fuss at you and make you. But, but Jesus said, you want your prayers answered? You want your prayers answered? Get down to business. Push that plate back. Say no to that flesh a little bit. Call on God. Not just fast, pray. Not just miss a meal, go in the closet and say, Oh God, Lord help me. God help my boy. God help my home. God help my husband, my wife. God help me. God, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. I know I'm old fashioned. I know that's old timey. But it's right and it works if we'll do what God wants us to do. Right. And I tell you what.
what you ought to do. Instead of sitting there saying, oh, no, here we go. I know what he's doing. He's going to try to make me feel. You know what you ought to do? You ought to come up here and hug my neck and say, thank you for encouraging us to do what God wants us to do. That's what you ought to do. If you're so backslid and sports crazy and you're so food loving that you won't even do something for God and then wonder why. I've heard people say, well, I wonder why God don't bless the church no more. I'll tell you why. Because people don't want it. He said, I'll pour water on him. It's thirsty. People ain't thirsty for God. You get thirsty, God will dump the blessings out on you. Amen. You know, uh, you know, food is is uh, is something I like. Food. People look at me and they say, "Well, you little skinny runt, you ain't, you know, it ain't hard for you as it is me." Listen, I like food good as anybody in here. I can probably eat as much as anybody in here. Well, there's a couple of fellers in here tonight. I won't name no names. That can probably I can't I can't eat two Big Macs and four loaf fries. I'll throw up. Uh, but uh, for, for the most of you, I can probably eat as much as anybody in here. I love it. I like food. I enjoy it. But you know, you can, uh, you can, uh, here, here's some questions. If you, you answer these questions, and if your answer to these questions, one or more, is yes, then you have a food addiction. I think, I think they put stuff in food to make it addictive. I think sugar is definitely addictive. And all God's people say it. I love, I'm hooked on it. I remember one time, all my girl, you remember, all y'all remember the Atkins diet that came out a long time ago? Long time ago. And I, I, I gained a little weight. And my girl, Carrie, Krista, Corey, all of them, everyone said, Daddy, we got the new diet. I said, What is it? They said, It's the Atkins diet. And they, I said, I don't want to no diet. And they said, Look, you'd love it. You, you can do this, Daddy. I said, What is it? They said, you can eat all the meat, green beans, cheese, stuff like that. I said, really? Uh, you eat all, all the steak you want? Yep. All the ham you want? Yep. All the bacon you want? All the sausage you want? I said, I'll take it. What? They said, you just can't eat starch. They got no bread and no pasta and no sugar. I said, piece of cake. So I, brother, I was starting on my new diet. I went down to Golden Corral. I got me a plate full of steak, eat green beans. And I kept eating, kept eating. Never did feel full. And I ate all I could eat. And when I left, I was hungry. I thought, how could I be hungry? My, I, how could I possibly be hungry? I, you know, and well, yeah, I got myself so used to wanting something sweet that I couldn't be satisfied until I had something sweet. It's like, do you, do you have to have something to eat before you can go to bed at night? You got a problem. Good Lord, everybody don't shout at the same time. <laughs> now, I eat at night because I preach in the evening and I don't eat no supper or nothing. So a lot of times I eat at night. That's my excuse. Uh, but, but still, it's awful. It's awful. Uh, do, you, do you catch yourself just eating fast? Just so you can get some more. I do. So when I go to a goal, when I go to the buffet, my goal is not to enjoy the meal. My goal is get as much of that in my gut as I can get in. The faster the better, and beat that other fellow over there before all that fish gets gone off, off of the off of the buffet. Get it in me. That's a that's an addiction, brother. Amen. You are hooked on sugar. I love it. I love it. Lord in mercy. I can. And I'm telling you, I went and played ball after I'd done that two or three days. And every time I'd shoot, it, it was short. And I said, what in the world? How come? And it's like I was weak. I was eating steak every day and I was weak. My body was is detoxing off of that sugar and starch. Could not have thought I was going to die. Uh, carb, carb, carbohydrate, pasta. And bread and sugar and caffeine are all addictive. And all God's people said, and most of us in here got every one of them. You criticize them meth heads. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Uh, it's not as bad as meth. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing. Try to quit and watch how bad you like it. No caffeine, no sugar, no carb, no, no starch. 
for about a week. You think you're going to die. Honest to goodness. How about this? Do you nibble? Your answer to this question is yes, you got a problem. Do you nibble all day long waiting on time for it to really eat? The worst thing you can do, and we done, I've done it in the bedroom, is have a little bowl of candy or a cookie sitting out where every time you walk by, you can see them. I ain't thinking about food. And walk by, ooh, I want one of them. And you grab it. Ain't that the way we are? I'm like that. I ain't fussing at y'all. And I'll go back and get another one. 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 Listen, brother, cookies and milk. Good night in the morning, y'all. I, I mean, when the cookies are hot, right out of the oven. What am I preaching on fasting? I'm, I'm, everybody going to be, uh, we're, we're doing the opposite of fasting tonight, I can tell you that. Uh, but look, do you, look, do you, do you, um, you, don't, you don't go shopping for groceries when you're fasting. You'll, you'll spend $10,000 on groceries. Wait till you're full, then go do your grocery shopping. Man, if I go to the store on the damn something, oh, I want that, and I want that, and I want that. that. That's a big mistake. Well, I'll tell you something worse than nibbling all day. You get up in the middle of the night and sneak into the kitchen when everybody don't know it. Get the ice cream and dig it out a little bit. You say, nobody knows. Mm, this is my little secret. It's all mine. It's all mine. <laughs> that's what that's what are. It's an addiction, brother. Amen. That's right, brother. That's right. Uh, here's one. Do you eat until you feel uncomfortable? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Lord, I get a good meal. I say, I'm getting my money's worth, bless God. I, my, I'm walking out there saying, oh, I'm about to die. And you have to go get Rolaids and, and, and Alka-Seltzers and, and Tums and, and, and everything else uh, to try to feel better. We're, we're in bad, 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 bad shape, y'all. We're in bad shape. I tell you what, 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 the, what fasting will do. Fasting will cleanse your body, your mind, and mostly your spirit. The physical benefits of fasting is unmeasurable. A good medical doctor will even agree with that. Some of them don't, that don't believe the Bible, but a good Christian medical doctor will tell you, your body got to have a break once in a while. You can't just dump, 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 dump food down in there three and four times a day, seven days a week, and expect to be healthy. It can't work like that. Did you know your body, that God put in our body some stuff that will heal itself? Uh, like a like a dog. You ever notice when a dog gets in a fight, gets hurt real bad, it won't eat. You know what that's telling? That it's it's healing itself. And we got stuff inside of us that'll heal itself, but it won't work if we don't give it a chance to to to, to work and and heal the part that's hurting. Right, preacher, friend of mine. He told me. He said, brother Danny. He said I had bad ear infection. He said every two or three months. I'd get the awfulest ear infection ever was. I'd have to go to the doctor. He'd give me an antibiotic, and I'd take it, and I'd be all right in a few days. And he said, I got to doing it. Now, personally, I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not telling you what to take. I don't, I don't feel right about antibiotics. Something ain't right about antibiotics. I'm not telling you not to do it. Tell you what, in my, in, to me, for me, me, I think there's other ways to fight Stuff off and natural and, and vitamins and something don't sound right about antibiotics to me, y'all. Every time you have a sniffle, you don't need an antibiotic. I'm not telling you not to take your medicine. I ain't a doctor. But something ain't right with that stuff. And he, he said, I'd have to go to the doctor and get an antibiotic, knock it out. Get an antibiotic, knock it out. And he said, me and some of the men got under a burden. And he said, we started fasting. And we said, we started fasting every Saturday. Every Saturday, me and the men would fast because God, our church was dead. Wasn't nobody getting saved. Uh, his uh, services was blah. He, he said, we, we wanted God to move in our church. And he said, the Lord did start moving in the church. And he said, the weirdest thing is, he said, my ear infection stopped. He said, it went away. He said, it never did do it no more. He said, just that fasting one day a week cleared up that inflammation. Because, you know, all that sugar and junk stuff feeds that inflammation, and it just like throwing, throwing fertilizer on kudzu vine, brother. That stuff grows and grows. 
and grows. And inflammation is like, like my shoulder, young. You know, my shoulder messed up. And, you know, they, I finally they begged me to go on the doctor back a few months ago. I got two torn uh, places in that shoulder right there. And it still hurts when I when I do that real hard, but I ain't nothing to do about it. And I did go to the doctor, and he gave me some junk and, and uh, made my blood pressure go up, and I quit taking it. And uh, I, I, I said, uh, I, so I started doing this, doing exercise and stuff like that. But I have them two stories. And what, what happens sometimes when I take a ball and I throw it real hard, like that right there, like a baseball pass, or like doing like you're painting a ceiling, man, it'll hurt right there. And what that is is inflammation. I go home, and it's, it's hot. It feels like it's burning. Right in there. And my sister Debbie, she bring me all, she's watching right now. She bring me all kind of stuff. Danny, use this, use that. And then patches. Lord, it stinks like that stuff mom used to put on your chest when you were a little kid. Uh, old, old, whatever that stuff was. Uh, when they put on your chest, you know. Yeah, like that. Shoo! Lord, like a, like a, like a linen man or something. And, uh, and you, you put it on there, it's supposed to help it, but that inflammation goes down. Now, when you fast, that inflammation is, is, is pushed back. I believe, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying fasting cures everything. I'm saying fasting helps a lot of our physical problems and prevents a lot more. That's the secret, prevents. Instead of getting medicine to get well, do stuff to keep from getting sick. Don't that make a lot more sense? Now to do that, you have to discipline the flesh. You have to. Drink you a sip of that virgin olive oil. Oh, Lord, that'll kill you. you you'll lose your appetite, brother. Uh, uh, but I tell you, that stuff's good for you. And, and uh, mother organic uh, apple cider vinegar and stuff like that. Teaspoon every day. Tastes horrible. Uh, uh, but it, it's, it's better than getting the flu. It's better than getting uh, headaches. It's better than getting all. Listen, do that and, and eat right and God will bless you for it. I ain't got time to talk on all the physical benefits I'm talking about spiritual benefits did you know that fasting there was a day in this country when fasting was a normal thing in in uh, in spring of 1877 in the state of Minnesota uh, the governor warned they were going to be hit by locusts y'all y'all know about the uh, 17 year locusts you have, you have heard about that right everybody has comes every 17 years, and then there's the 13-year locust that comes every 13 years. I read the other day, no lie, summer of 2024, both of them are coming in this summer. And I hate it. When we go to camp, Lord, I mean, they're hauling in them trees. You hear them things hauling in them trees. They're laying everywhere. They, the 17-year locust and the 13-year locust are both coming this summer. We'll see, I reckon. But they set up in Minnesota that all them farmers had them crops out there and the locusts were destroying the crops and they were losing money. People couldn't eat. I mean, this is, we're talking about the late 1800s. And the governor of Minnesota stood up and declared April 26th, that's close to youth rally time, as a day of fasting. And he said on April 26th, we're going to declare the governor. When's the last time Roy Cooper called on everybody in North Carolina to fast. When the last time any local politician called on our country? When the last time anybody in Burke County called on us to fast? I'm screaming tonight. Listen, people, we need God. And the locusts came out and they got real warm, like it has us this year. And it got real warm and all the locusts came out. But winter wasn't over. And the next, about two weeks later, it came back and froze and killed every one of them. God did it on that day. Oh, you say, Brother Danny, listen, that's scriptural. They did stuff like that in the Bible. Listen, we prayed and fasted one time over at the old building before most of you came. And it come uh, as a 90% chance of rain. We had the youth rally out in a tent. And honest before God, brother, that rained all around here, all around Hickory, all on the other side of the north, all around. And God kept his hand over that tent so we could have youth rally that night. 
There ain't no doubt in my mind the devil wants to tear the youth rally up. There ain't no doubt in my mind the devil wants us to be cold and backslid and not able to get a blessing. Listen, brother, I fight the same flesh you fight. I got the same desires you fight. You think it's easy for me? It's just the same for me as it is you. But deep down inside, something in me says somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to get a hold of God. Somebody's got to get the blessing. Somebody's got to pray. Somebody's got to fast. And yet God in our youth this year. Amen. If you want to help me, I'd sure appreciate it. If you don't, I'll do it myself. All right. Jonathan Edwards preached a great, one of the greatest sermons in the history, not probably the most famous sermon in American history, The Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, preached by Jonathan Edwards. And that night, Jonathan Edwards preached that sermon. He leaned on the pulpit and held a little manuscript so close to his eyes where he could barely see it with that light. And as he was reading, grown men out in that congregation started hollering out for mercy. No light show, no smoke coming out of the altar. No Hollywood light found dance band. Stood there and read that scripture. Some of them run around and said, Mr. Edwards, stop! We're hanging out over hell! God still used that. I had like 17 hundreds of them. That sermon is still powerful today. Jonathan Edwards did not eat a bite or drink water for three days. So weak he could barely lean on the pulpit. In 1995, a United States senator called on the United States for a day of prayer and fasting. Oh, they might mention now your national day of prayer. That's good. I'm not against that. That's okay. But they never say Jesus. They never say the Lord Jesus Christ. And nobody says fast. If you got a Bible that don't have the word fasting in it, in Matthew 17, 21, you got a fake Bible, buddy. You better get you one that's got the word fasting in it. Right. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 5. He said, we'll apply ourselves. 1 Corinthians 7 and 5. I told you about the husband and wife. You got marriage problems? Husband, you, both, you and your wife both agree to fast together. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty seven. Paul said, in fastings often. The Lord Jesus Christ in his public ministry showed his humility as a man. He was tempted. But as God, he resisted the temptation. As, as a man, he fasted. As God, he resisted the devil. As a man, he was hungry. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Let me ask you something. Did Jesus need to fast? Of course not. Not for himself. He's sinless. He couldn't sin. He couldn't sin. Couldn't do nothing. He couldn't even think nothing wrong. He didn't have a sinful nature. Why did he do that? Answer me. Somebody tell me. Why did Jesus fast 40 days? Was he trying to get right? Was he, was he saying, Lord, if you just help me in my ministry, Lord, why'd he do that? He's setting an example. He's setting an example. You, you might have hypoglycemia. That's what a man told me one time. He said, I can't fast. He's like, oh, hypoglycemia, I have to eat. I said, well, you can make a few hours. You can make a few hours. Don't you give me that baloney. You can make a few hours. You just look like your belly too good. That's right. That's right. It's a discipline of the body to humble the soul. I've never been alone. I am a I'm a regular and a frequent and a consistent faster, but I'm not a long faster. I've never fasted long. Longest I've ever fasted was maybe three days. Uh, yeah, something like, uh, several times, two and a half to three days. So I don't know. They say after the third day, the hunger pains quit anyway. I don't know. I've never fasted that long. But I know one thing. It makes a difference. I know this. I've been preaching 50 years. And I've been preaching revivals for 50 years. And I fast on Wednesday. And I have, I'm, I, don't, I know you're not supposed to tell people when you fast because you're not supposed to like be bragging. Up. I'm trying to help you all to set an example for you. That's what I'm doing. I'm not trying to, don't think good of me. Really, if you think bad of me, you're right. That's what I deserve. But I've fasted consistently since around 1990. Because I had to. That's 30, 34 years. And I think about, 
I, I go on Wednesday, I preach Monday night, be okay. Tuesday night, I'd be okay. And I'd be in a motel somewhere and I'd be laying on my face and I'd say, God, please, please bless the service tonight. Please bless the service tonight. Please. And the devil would say, now, Danny, you ought to just go ahead and eat because, you know, you want to be alert, strength, have strength, strength, be able to run around and scream like you do. You can't do that. On him. And, and you know what? I'd go ahead and fast. And that night when I got up to preach, there was more liberty. There was more power. There was more than any night of the week. And I thought that couldn't be an accident. It happened over and over and over and over again. It's like your mind. You don't, you don't, why, what, what do they do in Mexico? You go eat, eat dinner. 12 o'clock, that's what we call dinner. Suppers of the evening. Uh, but Yankees say lunch. But we say breakfast, dinner, and supper in the, in the, in the, in the country. But uh, when you, you go eat dinner, and then you go lay down and take a nap. Which means food sort of makes you sort of like, eh, I, I, that's why I don't like to eat before I preach. Man, on the day that I didn't eat, I'd get up and it seemed like, bam, 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 bam. Thoughts would just come in. And the Lord, it just as clear as a bell. And I thought, my Lord, there is something to this. There is something to it. Life is hectic, y'all. Life is crazy. There's a lot coming at us. There's a lot coming at us. God help us. God help us to fast. Did you know that food was involved in the first sin of mankind? First sin caused our fall. Food was involved. Eat. That ought to tell us something. Nothing wrong with it. I love it. I mean, I like it, man. I think, you know, to me, a ribeye steak that's got a little pink inside and real tender and seasoned right and a baked potato and then that haagen that's the best thing you can put in your mouth. Caramel bugles is up there. <laughs> you ought to try them things, man. They're good. You can't get them a lot of places. But uh, listen, if we will say, God, I'll push that plate back a little bit. Lord, if you'll help me, I'll do this by your grace. I believe God would honor our prayer and fasting. I want us to bow our head for prayer. Everybody bow your head. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for our health for our strength, for all the many blessings of life. And Lord, what I'm getting ready to do, you know. Lord, you know. Lord, that my, my flesh don't like it. My flesh don't want it. But I believe it's what you want us to do. And I pray that you'd bless us as a church to pray and fast. Have mercy on us, O oh God, as we endeavor on these next 40 days Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. And give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can leave the cameras on because there's people online want to help. What I'm going to do tonight, uh, there, in the Bible, when they fasted, they would be like, like tonight, you might eat a snack tonight, and then you don't eat nothing all day tomorrow. And sometimes in the Bible, they go to 6 o'clock in the evening. Other times in the Bible, which is what I normally do, We'll go 24 hours. Like if you don't eat nothing from 9 o'clock tonight, 9 o'clock tomorrow night. That's 24 hours. And for special occasions and youth rally, you'd want to go all the way to the next one. Like you didn't eat tonight, and then you won't eat till Tuesday morning. That would be all day tomorrow and all night. That's between you and the Lord. That's between you and the Lord. And now, what you drink uh, is between you and the Lord. Not a thick, thick, thick milkshake. That ain't a drink. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, this, this book here is absolutely the best book that's ever been written on something. You can't buy that in the bookstore. You can order that online cheap. It's called Fast Your Way to Health by J. Harold Smith. And you can save yourself from doctor bills. You want to you get your weight down? That's not, that's not why we fast. That's one of the added benefits. 
You fast one day a week, now for the next six weeks, you'll lose weight if you don't pig out the very next day and ruin it. Uh, that's right, you will. It's best, best and you're not doing it for that, but that's just one of the extra benefits of it. Uh, you can easily, easily lose one, two pounds a week for six weeks. That's 12 pounds. Easily. That wouldn't hurt us. That wouldn't hurt us. Now, that's not why we do it. If you want this book, order it online. It's called Fast Weight Health by J. Harold Smith. There's another one out there, but it's not by J. Harold Smith. That, that ain't the right one. You read that book right there? Honestly, I'll read this, uh, a lot of it. I've done been reading it, getting myself ready for extra fasting, and it's unbelievable, unbelievable. He, he just got stuff in here like, like just over and over and over. Fasting helps produce the fruit of the Spirit. Fasting helps reveal the will of God. Fasting gets you free from the bondage of Satan. You got lustful thoughts. Got wicked old sexual junk tormenting your head. You can't get it out. That's the way to do it. It's fasting. Fasting helps uh, overcome the desire for excessive amounts of food. Get your appetite in. I'm not saying it's wrong to eat cake and sugar and ice cream, but we, you got to back off a little bit, y'all. You got to back off a little bit. Kill you. You're digging your grave with a fork, and you have to do. You have to do that. So don't. There's full of stuff like that. Full. Of, so I would, I would like for everybody in our church, get that book and make yourself read it. Make yourself. It'll help you. Um, and you'll be healthier and live longer and happier. All right? So what we're going to do, you determine on how long you're going to go. Now, I know in the Bible you're not supposed to tell, oh, you know, you're not supposed to disfigure your face as the Pharisees did. Don't go into work and go like this. What's wrong with you? I'm fasting for the youth rally. Poor me. No. Nope. You're supposed to anoint your head, you brush your teeth, smell good, look good, and never tell nobody at work or nowhere else. If they say you want something to eat, just say no thank you. If they push you and push you and push you, you say I'm fasting for, for our church you family. But don't go bragging about it or you ain't going to get nothing from God. All right? So what we're going to do, start tomorrow, is 40 days to the youth rally. The 40th day is April 19th. Be the first night of the youth rally. We're going to take I want uh, volunteers for every day of the week. And so we'll have somebody in our church fasting for the next 40 days. There's six of them. Tomorrow's Monday, six Mondays, six Tuesdays, six Wednesdays, six Thursdays. There might be one of them that there's not six of them. It might be, might be Fridays or it might be, well, usually there's one or two days. Sunday's the hardest day. and uh, But uh, if you're willing to do that. Now, I don't want 10 on Monday and one on Tuesday. Let's divide it up a little bit just in case somebody don't do it. So when the Lord looks down in the next 40 days, somebody in Shining Light Baptist Church is going to be fasting every day and praying. So instead of at lunch, maybe go out and sit in your car and just say, God, please help us. God, get the sin out of me. God, we got people in here who's got all kinds of requests. God, help them. Help people in our church. Help the young people. Help us all to get right. Let's do that, okay? All right. I will now start. You done got it in your mind, right? I will now start with Monday, and then we're going through the days of the week all the way to, start to next Sunday, beginning tomorrow. So I need at least three or four for each day, if possible. Monday. Okay, that's, that's five easy right there. Tuesday. That's good. That's great. That's five, six or seven. Wednesday. All right. That's good. Thursday. A little less on Thursday. Maybe a couple of you. Okay, that's one, two, three, four. Okay, Thursday. Friday. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Saturday. Uh, one, two, uh, three. All right. We need maybe some of you Tuesdays to switch Saturday. Saturday's a tough day. Okay, Brent, you want to do that? Saturday. Sunday. That's a hard day. Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Sunday's the hardest day. Sunday will be the hardest day. You want Sunday after dinner and stuff like that? Anybody else? Sunday. We need somebody to swap. You know that includes Easter. I mean, who wants to fast on Easter Sunday? But you do it however God wants you to do. Uh, somebody can switch over to Sunday. That would be good if anybody else did this. Thank you, Spencer. I appreciate that. All right. Now, these boys, they're going up to West Virginia to preach youth rally Friday and Saturday night. They're headed up, up to Brother Gary's for youth rally. And then they'll be back Sunday morning. We'll have our youth service here Sunday night. So it's right on through. Now, you pray and ask God what he wants you to do as far as starting tonight, going to tomorrow night, starting tomorrow. In the Bible, sometimes they did go to 6 o'clock in the evening. That was considered that, and that was considered evening, 6 o'clock. You do it however God leads you, okay? All right, and then extra 
have the Lord lead you. Anybody got a question or a comment? Anybody got a question? About about anything. Don't don't be embarrassed. All right, we are officially proclaiming a 40-day fast at our church. Somebody will be fasting every day beginning tomorrow. It ain't because we're something special. It's because we're something awful. And we need God. We need God. If we was great like some of these churches and never needed everything was great all the time, probably wouldn't need fast. But we ain't. We, we a bunch of sinners that need help. Anybody want to say something or ask a question? Don't be embarrassed. The first time I really fasted, I hadn't been saved very long, and I didn't eat nothing Sunday night when I went home, and I said, I'm going Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, something like that. And I worked the third shift, worked all night Sunday, came home, slept, didn't eat nothing, worked all night Monday, didn't eat nothing, come home, slept, and Tuesday night, Man, I'll never forget, I made me scrambled eggs and bacon and eat a huge breakfast about eight, 9 o'clock at night. Oh, my, it's the best thing I ever tasted in my life. And by the way, it'll make your food taste a lot better, too. Amen. My classic illustration is when we're going home, have you ever been going down the road? You say, let's go out to eat tonight. Yeah, where you want to go? I don't know. Where you want to go? I don't know. You want to go to fish camp? Nah. Oh, there's a Mexican place. You want to eat Mexican food? No, we had that yesterday. Oh, there's a Chinese place. You want to go there? No. Hey, you go down the end of the strip, turn around, ride back up. There's a steakhouse. No, I don't, I don't really know what I want. You know, you know what's wrong with you? You ain't hungry. You're not hungry. You ain't going to pass all them places up if you're hungry. Don't eat nothing from now until Tuesday morning. And a cold mater biscuit out of the refrigerator will suit you just fine. A cold mater biscuit will do you, you'll love it. It'll taste better than steak. You don't eat nothing between now and Tuesday morning. True. It's true. So I just wanted to help y'all tonight. I love y'all. Thank you for being on board with me on this. If none of y'all do it, I'd do it myself. And I'd ask God to kill you. No. Uh, no I, I would not. I wouldn't do that. Uh, but uh, I'd say, uh, Lord, give us some help. We need some help around here. Listen, you don't, you don't have a youth rally outside and a thousand people running around and everybody stay safe, no legs broke or no pipe break and no, the weather just by accident. We got we got to pray. We got to pray. Don't just say, oh, Brother Danny been doing this for years. It'll be great. No, that ain't the way it works. You, all kind of terrible stuff could happen. We had a man and woman get in a fight one time. Now you thought him marrying. I thought him. I mean, one of them, bam, knocked one into the cotton candy machine. They was back there slinging that. And I was up there and I was just, everybody just keep singing. <laughs> I mean, and the, the devil loved to get in it. He'd love to get in. Let's don't let him. All right. All hearts clear. Ready? Can't wait. Here we go. Tomorrow. All righty. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Uh, we'll be dismissed in prayer. Be friendly. Friendly and fellowship a little bit before you go. Don't forget, next Sunday evening, bring everybody you possibly can. Next Sunday at 5 o'clock. I'm excited. We're fasting. Let's go. Let's pray. Be dismissed. Uh, and, and a word of prayer. And, and then, then, then we'll go tonight. Okay? Amen. All right. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Brother Randy, how about dismissed?